to stop you there because Brendan Rodgers just sat down to speak to Ian String. Uh, Brendan, hi. It's Ian up in the comment box. I hope you're, uh, you're able to hear us. We are still live on Radio Leicester. Um, hi, Ian. You, hi, hi, Brendan. Um, <clears throat> sometimes you're beaten by the better side. Was that the case tonight? Yeah, yeah. I think it's an amazing channel, ladies. I think uh, first half with and without the ball, we weren't aggressive enough. You know, you've seen us in some of these games against the, the, the bigger opponents where we can uh, tactically be compact and then break out either on a counter-attack or, or have periods with the ball where we can then exploit. But, um, but we didn't do that. I was disappointed with it with the first half, the lack of aggression in our game. And uh, and then obviously when you're not that aggressive without the ball, it's it's difficult to, to flip over and and be that when you have it. So um so yeah, disappointed with the first half. Second half, a bit better, started well, changed the shape of the team, um got in contact with people and uh, and then it was just then about the next goal. Could we could we get the goal? Um and then we concede another goal from a set piece, which uh, which sort of kills the game, really, uh, in, in some ways. And, and again, we weren't aggressive enough in our in our marking. So, um, so yeah, best team won. Um, we're disappointed with the performance result, but an easy game to analyse. Unlike the, uh, as I said, the, the game last year when we played when we lost four 0 at home, that was a tough one to take. Why do, you, why do you think there was a lack of aggression, Brendan? Um. I think obviously we've been out of rhythm for for a few weeks. Uh, obviously, players going away, international duty coming back in, and uh, uh, yeah, just uh, just like that sort of little bit of cohesion tonight. And um, so yeah, but um, but also it, it's sometimes the way the game works out. But it's so important. You've seen in these other games that we've played, we've been aggressive, we defend it well, uh, but tonight we lack that for some reason. Do you feel your energy levels lacked a little bit as well, Brendan? I'm thinking in the middle of the park. I know you've talked about internationals. There's been travelling involved and, and players have been out playing for their countries. Do you think you lacked energy this thing in places? Yeah, yeah, yeah a little bit. I think that's all, all part of it. We with the squad and the, the players that we you know we have out. So, um, But listen, the, the players until this point, nine games in, I know it's very early, but they've been you know, going away from home to have played Man City and, and Liverpool away and Arsenal away and uh, West Brom away and um, you know Leeds away. It, it, it's a tough opening period for us, but the players have been brilliant, especially with everyone out tonight. Like I said, it, it's an easy game to, to look at and see where we can be better. We'll put it behind us very quickly and, and now move on. Uh, no. Timothy Castagna in the squad this evening, Brendan. Well, is he okay? Is he match fit? Could he have played? No, no, he wasn't. He trained with us for a few days and then he he just felt a slight little twinge. We don't think it's, it's well, it's nothing major, but it was one where it was just too big a risk for him. He's been out for a few weeks now and we feel that uh, just for him missing out tonight and um, we'll see how it goes for, uh, for next weekend. So hopefully him missing tonight, having a clear week, uh, we'll get him ready for our next game. Was that still in his hamstring, Brendan? Yeah, yeah, same same spot. He's come back, he had a few good days training, we thought he was going to be all right, uh, but he just uh, he said he had just something minor he felt. Uh, we had a scan, it's okay, but uh, but he wasn't available. What have the players had to say about the Matip handball in the first half? We've replays obviously help us up in the commentary box, but at the time, the players down there seemed pretty comprehensive in their appeals for a penalty. Obviously, it wasn't given. What have your players said? I haven't spoke to them on it, Ian, to be honest. Obviously, we're, we're quickly at the goals and then we're, we're away. So I haven't actually haven't actually seen it. Okay. Um, you've not got too much time to turn around, of course, Brendan. Uh, Europa League next up later on this week. It's a big one for you. How do you feel you're going to be able to dust yourself down and crack on? Actually, does the fact the game's come and, and they are so plentiful at the minute, does that help in, in many ways for you to, to get over that? Yeah, absolutely. That, that's what... I said to the players afterwards, we you know we don't dwell on it. We've had a terrific start. Um, we, we were beaten by the better team tonight. Um, you know, everyone talked about Liverpool's injuries, and and that was the narrative leading into this game. But it's still a you know a top class team with you know uh, you know real players at the front end of the pitch that can hurt you. Um, and obviously, we've got still a number of players out. But the players that are playing for us at the moment, they're doing terrific. They're giving everything. It just wasn't our night. 
So we move on. Always appreciate your time, Brenda. Safe trip back. Thank you. Cheers, Ian. Thank you. Okay, uh, Jeremy Langdon, Sky. Hi, Brendan. Hi, Jeremy. Just on the own goal, it was pretty freaky. What did you make of it? Well, it was that. Um, Johnny's been outstanding for us, and it was just one of those ones where he uh, obviously just couldn't adjust, and it's come off the back of his head and and went in and. And obviously that's a goal that gives them the, the confidence. We had a couple of moments in breakaways where we looked a threat. Um, but of course that settles them down a little bit. So, um, but yeah, we've conceded two goals from set pieces tonight, which uh, we're not overly happy with. So we need to analyse that. And uh, yeah, we uh, you know, we had a couple of moments. Harvey's got a great chance. Um, you know, a good move up the left side. JJ pulls it back and we have a chance. But uh but yeah, the first goal obviously is it's one of those things. And just on Liverpool, uh, Brendan, it's 64 home games now unbeaten at Anfield. And it's an incredible record. And what kind of message does it send out to the Premier League that they can do that to you tonight, missing so many players? Yeah, I think that's been an art of leading into the game all week. But, um, you know, my, my players have done fantastic with the number of players that we've had out. You know, we've had it up to five, what we would say, starting players players that have been with us and, and other players that have been in and out of the, the team. So, uh, so yeah, it, it's something my players give their all tonight. We, we weren't at our best. Um, so, OK, we, we move on. Liverpool, it's an incredible record, you know, back to, what, 2017. So uh, and it shows you the power and it actually shows you the strength and depth that they have. So, uh, so yeah, they're, um, they're, they're an outstanding squad of players. It's a great record and I'm sure they'll look to to continue with that. Thank you. Cheers. Tom Colomossi, please. Hi, Brendan. Can you hear me okay? Hi, Tom. Yeah. You mentioned the narrative about injuries there. When you come to a place like Anfield, do you really need a full strength 11, not just Leicester, but any team, whereas you are without potentially three of a first choice defence plus and DD? Yeah, it, it, of course, it, and that makes it, you know, really difficult. However, I, I I have to give credit to to my players because this is probably the only time where uh, we haven't really performed to the level that we want to. You know, obviously, of course, we lost to West Ham at home, and, uh, and that wasn't so, so good. But we uh, we have a lot of players missing at this you know stage of the season, and uh, and the players that have come in have done really really well for us, Tom. So uh, so yeah, you come against the the teams uh, like Liverpool with the, the squads that they have. Of course, you you need. Uh, that strength, but um, but we'll look at the game. That there's there's areas that we could be better in, especially first half. We're a little bit too passive for for my liking. Second half was better, but we needed to get that next goal, and unfortunately we didn't do that. Just finally from me, James Justin is not particularly experienced at Premier League level, but he's been very impressive this season. Not always in his favourite position. How would you sum up his improvement under your management? Well, he's. He's been absolutely incredible, really. When when I think he's he's played it right back, he's played it left back, he's had to fill in at centre half. Um, just a phenomenal boy who, you know, he gives his all every game, and he's only going to get better and better playing in the Premier League. Great athlete, uh, working on aspects of his game that needs to improve. But uh, but yeah, plays in so many positions and filled in so many gaps when the team has needed him. And uh, yeah, he's a joy to work with and. And a young guy that's only going to get better. Thank you. Cheers. Can we take a couple more guys, Jordan, please? Hi, Brendan. Hi, Jordan. Um, I know you've you've spoken about the injuries, but because of Liverpool's sort of depleted backline, do you consider it a, a missed opportunity at all um, that you weren't able to to continue your good away record here? I don't really see it as a depleted backline, and I know they're missing. You know, I know they're. The, the missing Virgil van Dijk. Um, but Matip is a top player. Uh, Fabinho was filled in. You know, he's played there against Chelsea and, and played there against top players. Uh, Andy Robertson has always played. Alisson is the number one goalkeeper. And James Milner, wherever he plays, does an incredible job. So I don't go with that narrative. You know, they're, they're still very strong, uh, got top players. You look at the midfield, the players that will always play. So, uh, 
So yeah, they're just a outstanding team, super organised, play with heart, quality, and uh, yeah, we're the better team. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> last one from Rob Tanner, then, please. Hi, Brendan. Hi, Rob. Um, the defeat last season at the King Power Stadium, and again tonight. Do you think those two defeats uh, mask the progress that you've been making with this young side? And also, does it also show you how much improvement is still required to then challenge a side like Liverpool? I don't think it masks anything, Rob. You know, certainly from my you know, my own perception, it's it's pretty clear that the players are improving and developing all the time. You know, how they're coping and and, and where they're at compared to, you know, like I say, clubs like Liverpool, Manchester. United, Arsenal, Tottenham to an extent. These are teams and clubs with budgets far superior to, to how we're working. I think that we're we're making progress and, and developing. And along the way, you're going to have bumps on, on the road. So um, playing against a top-class team tonight, it's not quite like the last time, I, I feel. You know, I thought tonight we can analyse it much clearer. The 4-0 when we played at the King Power, they were they were showed why they were just off being world champions. Tonight, we're just disappointed with the first half in particular. You know, unlucky first goal, but we, we still we can defend better. And we've shown that against the top sides. So, uh, so yeah, a little bit too passive for my liking. But in the main, yeah, I am, I'm not disappointed at all. It's part of the journey, you know. So uh, we need to keep striving. It's always going to be difficult for us to compete with, you know, a world champion and a Premier League champion. But we have to keep fighting and and and, uh, and never give, give up on that. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Brian.